Dang. Am I here? It's a... Uh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Uh, so good morning, weirdos. Uh, I had a little technical difficulty getting on this morning. Uh, YouTube wouldn't let me uh, go live. It was just a short period of time that I couldn't go live there, people. So sorry if I missed you. If there's anyone out there, please chime in and say good morning. Good morning. Um, <sighs> yes, it is Wednesday, January 17, 2024. It is the future. It is the past. It is now. The future is the past, is now. Good morning, happy coffee. Ah, well, so this morning uh, we have a uh, couple of radio shows for you to listen to. Uh, we've got um, up first is uh, a radio show from the 40s and uh, maybe the 50s called Escape. I believe it was just the 40s, maybe early 50s. Um, this one is from 1949, and it is called Escape. And it is, um, let's see, Line Engine versus the Ants. Um There was a movie made with Charlton Heston, and he's on the cover uh, there. It was not called Line Engine versus the Ants. I don't even think the character was named Line Engine in the movie version. Um, but um, a, a man owns a uh, a farm in uh, in the jungles of South America, I think. Um, and has to deal with the uh, the rampaging army ants. And then uh, part two of our radio show today will be Sorry Wrong Number from the, the radio show Suspense. Um, and it's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic uh, radio show series. Uh, as well as a, a fantastic radio show. Uh, Sorry, Wrong Number has Agnes Moorhead. Agnes Moorhead, uh, if you remember, was the uh, the mother of... Uh, the mother witch on Bewitched. Uh, most famously. Uh, for me, most famously, she was part of the Mercury Theater on the air. Um, yeah. She worked closely with uh, oh, what's his name, Orson Welles, who was the uh, kind of the the man behind the Mercury Theater on the air. Um, and you can you can see that he had a he had an affinity for Agnes Moorhead and her acting abilities. She was in quite a few of his his movies, Orson Welles movies. Um, And uh, yeah, so give me a second and we'll put on some, uh, some old time radio here. Ah, uh, so yeah, sorry to have such a late start, but I logged in and then it said, you are not available to live stream at this time. So I was like, whoa, man, that's, that's heavy stuff there. So anyway, I rebooted here I am. The nine gen versus the answers. The nine gen. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, no. 
And let's see here. Good old, good old radio show here. Side A, line engine versus the ants. Indian workers together in front of the plantation house. 
look in the comments I've posted copies to these shows. You'll notice 
how all the buildings are on this piece of high ground. If in a ditch surrounds them, it's lined with concrete. But even filled with water, there's no barrier. It's not big enough. Why, if the ants get this far, they'll, they'll get no farther. This ditch wasn't built for water, Commissioner. <laughs> See the pipes leading into it? See those storage tanks on the hill? Petrol. We can throw up a wall of flame. I get a bit they won't like that. Fine, should look. Over the edge of the jungle, all those animals. Ah, running like the wind.
blame them away. We beat them. We won out. It was true. Leinenton had won. The opening round. The floodgates were left open to Fort Tall any night crossing. When dawn came, the dark blanket was still there. Motion was across the beach. Then we noticed the feverish activity on the other side of the plantation. Here, a grove of tamarind trees lined the far end of the beach. And every tree swarmed with a crawling insect. But instead of eating the leaves, they were merely gnawing through the tent. So that a thick green shower fell steadily to the ground. Have all the petrol pumps brought? Get everyone over here except the lookouts on the other side. Then pass out the shovel. Continue. Like I underestimated them when I said they didn't have intelligence. What do you mean? I said if they wanted to get across, they'd have to have rafts. Just what Everybody knows no, ants can build rafts. rafts. Even a child knows that. Even as he spoke, the leaves went tumbling down the far bank by the thousands. The current drew them away from the bank, and each leaf was crawling with ants. Don't worry, Commissioner. I still got a trick up my sleeve. Hey, no, the water! The ants are drying up. Of course it's drying up. That's the plan. <laughs> Those are the orders I send to the dam. Are you mad? As soon as it's empty, what's to prevent the ants from... Look... The water's way down. It's almost dry. They'll be able to come across the bar. They'll not make it if the man at the dam carries out his orders. He should have opened the gates again by now. But the end, right? What a chance to take it. Anything should happen. Ah, ah, ah. Here I come. Here comes the water. Ah. Now we'll get the crawlers in the ditch of the rise out into the river. Now we'll see how our 
Billion. Some time before the petrol burned down in the bed of the ditch. And when it did, the devils came back for more. Again and again, wide again, fire the ditch, destroyed. But as they returned to the assault time after time, a slow, sickening horror crept into my mind. I looked quickly at Lanage in the next potential tank. He read my gaze and nodded slowly. That's right, Commissioner. You know, we could hold them up forever if our supply of petrol was uh, unlimited, but it isn't. We've only got enough to fill the ditch once more. Linus, and isn't there a way? Any way at all? Ah, there must be. Yes, there must be a way. Yes. Yes, yes. What is it? We'll block the whole plantation. What? But how? The river's higher than any part except this high ground we're on now. The river was damped all the way. If it overflow that stone breakwater and flood the whole plantation. We've got to close the floodgate and the dam. That'll do it. You're mad. The dam is more than a mile away. A mile of ants. It's impossible. You're going to get there, let alone get back. That's why you're wrong, Commissioner. I'll get there. I'll get back. Ha! Ha! Take care of things while I'm gone, eh? I watched him as he calmly pulled on high leather boots, drew gauntlets over his hands, and stuffed the spaces between bridges and boots, gauntlets and arms, with petrol soaked rags. He chewed the tires of close fitting mosquito goggles, he plugged his nostrils and ears and cup. Then the native drenched his clothes with petrol. Lost to act as doctor to the men, smeared a tan over him. And finally, Lyneson was ready. And he stood surveying the cross he must take to the dam. I think there's nothing calm. Crazy. As I stood near the ditch ready for the run, I realized this was as it should be. I, Lime Engine, would meet the ants and defeat them. Or be defeated by them. <laughs> Lime Engine versus the ants. Yes, it was right that it should be like this. Now there was no more time for thought. Only action. Took a deep breath and then bounded across the ditch and among the ants. I ran. I ran in long, equal strides with one thought, one sensation in my being. I must get through. I dodged all trees and shrubs. Except for the split seconds my nose touched the ground, the ants would have no opportunity to light on me. I ran on. I was halfway to the dam before I felt ants under my clothes and a few on my feet. I struck them mechanically, scarcely conscious of their bite. The dam drew toward me slowly. The distance grew left. Left. Finally, only a hundred yards away. Then I was there. I gripped the ant-covered wheel. Hardly as I seized it when a horde of ants flowed over my hands and arms. I strained. Slowly the wheel turned and turned forward. The case was swinging, slowly shut. The head was shut. The water was rising, rising behind the breakwater, closer to the top. Closer. Then it was spilling over. The flooding of the plantation had begun. Started back to the ant. The first time I realized I was coated from hip to foot with a pin. Tons of fire stabbed me as they bit into my flesh. I almost lost my head with a pain as I ran, knocking ants from my body, brushing them from my bloody face. And then one bit me just below the rim of my goggles. And it's a tear it away. The agony of the fight and its venom thrilled into the eye nerve. I saw now the circles of the fire into a milky mist. I was almost blinded, but I knew that if I didn't fail, I... I ran on, my heart pounding as if it was burst, blood roaring in my ears, a giant rattling my lungs. Then I... I could see, dimly, that wall of flame at the ditch. Oh, but too far away. I, I couldn't last half that distance. I, I stumbled. I, I, I felt myself being swarmed over, devoured. I... I... Eyes and lacerated face. We rushed to him, stripped off his clothes, and tore at the ants that covered him. 
His body seemed almost one open wound in one place. I could see a white bone. <laughs> Later, the curtain of flame lowered. I looked out where that blanket of ants had been. It saw only a vast expanse of water covering the entire plantation. What was its way within a few feet of the concrete ditch? The ants were gone, drowned, and lined you at once. It lay on its bed, body swathed from head to foot with bandages. The lion. stuff right there. Let me grab that record. They're weirdos. Uh. Next up is Sorry Wrong Number with Agnes Moorhead from the show Suspense. Start this and let's see if I need to rescue a dog here. Presents suspense. Still Roma wine. This is the man in black here again to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Our star tonight is one of the most compelling actresses in America today, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Miss Moorhead returns to our stage to appear in a new study in terror by Lucille Fletcher called Sorry, Wrong Number. <laughs> this story of a woman who accidentally overheard a conversation with death and who strove frantically to prevent murder from claiming an innocent victim is tonight's tale of suspense. If you have been with us on these Tuesday nights, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation 
then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so it is with sorry, wrong number and the performance of Agnes Moorhead. We again hope to keep you in suspense.
where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary to be tracked down because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A, a terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman. Tonight at 11.15. I see. Well, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? I'm not certain. It depends. Depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. And disconnected, we can. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but even a... <laughs> Staten Island. 
out on some little second avenue you've never even heard about. How do you know they're even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call of the New York dialing system. Maybe it was a long distance call you overheard. The telephone's a funny thing. Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Suppose you've got your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be upset, would you? No, I suppose not. Only it, it, it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. Well, a lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. Well, we managed to prevent most all of them, but the clue of this kind is so vague. I... It isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely you... Unless, of course, uh, you had some reason for thinking this call was phony, and that somebody may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, what? No, I hardly think so. Well, I mean, why should anybody? I, I, I'm alone all day and night. I I see nobody except my maid, Eloise, and it, it, she's a big girl. She weighs 200 pounds. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. And the, and the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He just adores me. Wait, I'm in hand and foot. It scarcely left my side since I took six 12 years ago. Well, and there's nothing for you to worry about. But, now, if you just leave the rest of this to us, we'll take care of it. What you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it later. Well, will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squads and, and, and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. Well, good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, you, you. <laughs> 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 Why did I hang up the phone like that? Now we don't think I am a fool. Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? somebody a chance to say hello back. Give me the business office at once. You may dial that 
you're looking at Matt. Why you say they're Title though, right? Whack a doodle. This is information. May I help you? I, I, I want the telephone number of Pensley Hospital. Pensley Hospital? Yes. Do you have the street address? No, no, it's somewhere in the 70s. It, it's a very small, uh, private and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Uh, Hensley, H E L C. Well, would you please hurry and, and uh, please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, I've no time to be dialing. Number of Hensley Hospital is Butterfield 70105. Butterfield 
Department, Martin speaking. Oh, Police Department? Police Department. I'm sorry, I must have got the wrong number. But, but don't worry, everything's okay. <laughs> Columbia's invitation to spend this half hour in suspense with us again next Tuesday when Mr. Donald Crisp and Mr. John Loder will star in the suspense play called The Extra Guest. Producer of these broadcasts is William Spear, who with Ted Bliss, the director, Lud Gluskin, the musical director, and Lucille Fletcher, the author, collaborated on tonight's suspense. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> Wow. Well, that was one of my favorite uh, favorite suspense episodes. So Agnes Moorhead, she was a uh, she was a great character actress from uh, the '30s, '40s, '50s, '60s. Um, she seemed to be everywhere up until she uh, did the uh, did the Bewitched series. And then I don't remember her too much after that. Um, I, I would imagine that she was pretty aged at the time, probably in her 60s um, during the uh, during Bewitched, which would have been in the 60s. Uh, one of my favorite Agnes Moorhead uh, acting jobs was uh, the Twilight Zone episode where she was uh, a, a crazy old woman living in a cabin in the middle of nowhere uh, and she didn't speak one word she grunted and moaned and and sighed uh, and she would make other noises but she didn't speak one word um and then she was chased around her cabin by a little tiny robbie robot remember those little robbie robots um most notably from um the uh swiss family robinson in space uh was it lost in space Danger, Will Robinson, danger. That was Robbie Robot. Uh, and he made an appearance all over the place, even as a little toy robot. Um, but Agnes Moorhead was spectacular in that Twilight Zone episode. Um, she just, she was pretty much fantastic in everything that she did. She could really, really swing those uh, acting chops. So, uh, one thing I'd like to talk about today is what the hell is a promosm? Okay, a promosm, P R O M O S M, promosm. And let's see what Google says about promosm. Uh, <coughs> There we go. Uh, okay, uh, the term promo SM in YouTube comment commonly stands for promote so much or self promotion, indicating that the commenter is trying to promote their own content channel or product this type of comment often considered spam and is tip 
typically discouraged within the YouTube community. Okay, so as far as promosm goes, uh, if that's my title, then so be it. Um, I'm not promoting anything, really. Um, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I'm not trying to sell anybody in, uh, any ideas or ideals or way of life. Uh, I'm just using this as a forum to share my past experiences and try to make some kind of connection with my fellow human. All right. Uh, if you want to call it a promosm, you know, that's, that's your right. Uh, I don't get it. Um, and when I get a promosm comment, um, it's just going to be deleted because um, it, it seems like it has negative commendations. And I, that's not what this is about. I'm, I, I don't want to get into negativity. Uh, I don't want to focus in on, you know, people's um, issues, whatever they got going on. You know, if, if you're, if you come through and you watch it for a few seconds and you think, Oh, pro Muslim, keep the comment to yourself and move on and go to some place else and enjoy something else. Because if you can't just stop in, listen to what I'm listening to, talk about what I'm talking about, um, discuss whatever topics I'm, I'm discussing for the day, or just listen to a story about the past. If that's not for you, then move on down the line. Now, uh, in order to make this kind of go to the next level, uh, I do hope to get more subscribers. I do hope that people will kind of pass this around and it'll kind of snowball in, into something bigger. But uh, at the same time, it's still just a channel about me doing my shit, talking about my past. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. Uh, I may give some things away, but that's just because it seems like a lot of fun to um, to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one with somebody finding out about them, what they like, what they don't like, uh, what they were like back in the 80s, or if they weren't back in the 80s, excuse me, then what about the 80s do they like? Um, so that I can kind of have um, some kind of um, rapport with, with people watching. Now, as I said uh, earlier in the comments, um, I posted links to other YouTubers who um, have posted these radio shows that we listen to today. Um, so you can just go to the comments um, and, and click on the, um, on the uh, link that they give to the, uh, to the one, one of uh, both of the radio shows are, are both there. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I got this hit here. <clears throat> You know, I, this is like the second or third time that I've gotten a pro Muslim comment. Um, and I, I don't give a shit one way or the other what people think or how they think. Um, that's not my thing to, to worry about what's going on in other people's heads. I got enough going on in my own head. Uh, another reason why I've got this channel so I can sit. It's kind of a, a video di diary. All right, the captain's log, you know, star date, who gives a fuck? Um, but, you know, this channel is more for me than anything else. Secondly, it's for my wife and daughter. So they have the opportunity in retrospect to go back and see what dad's like. Um, to be able to have some kind of back and forth on occasion with family and friends. Uh, in, in kind of a time traveling um, forum here. Um, and, and lastly, it's to get to know other people out there who enjoy similar things or who just want to kind of find out about the past, about the 80s, the 70s. Um, those were the, the years that uh, 
that are vivid in, in my past or the 70s and 80s. Uh, so, you know, if you got any questions about what was going on there, uh, if I can't help you, usually I can find something uh, on YouTube that can help take you back to uh, a different place, a different time. Um, I enjoy the hell out of old movies, old TVs, old TV shows, old radio shows, um, old documentaries. Uh, I love to poke around on YouTube and find those um, digitally uploaded uh, 16 millimeter films um, of old Los Angeles and old San Diego and old Riverside and old San Bernardino. Uh, and it's just a camera and a car driving around the city streets and the neighborhoods and uh, or old family movies from from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, those are fascinating to me. Um, I, I can watch those forever, um, especially the ones that have a lot of exterior shots with mountain ranges and hillsides, because then it makes it real easy to figure out exactly where they are um, or street signs, um, buildings that still exist today. Um, it, it's neat to kind of line those up with satellite photos and figure out exactly where those old places are. Um, I've got a, a stack of eight millimeter movie um, film uh, reels from um, the 60s and 70s that are from out here in this area, um, Joshua Tree, 29 Palms, um, you know, old motorcycle riding movies. Um, I, I'm going to have to, at some point, break out uh, a projector and set it up in here so that we can kind of share some of those old, uh, and it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out some method of getting it on the screen here so that y'all can watch it. Um, I don't know if I would do a, uh, where the uh, album is there, maybe I can do a, uh, a white sheet screen with the projector on my side so I can see it from my side. But at the same time, you can see the reverse projection through the white sheet uh, on your side. That might be interesting. Uh, I'll have to run some tests on that to see if that if that's going to work. If that's going to work, that would be neat. And then I can sh share um, some old films um, on occasion. Um, but yeah, back to the whole promosm thing. Um, you know, if, if, if that's if that's what it is, then that's what it is. Get over it, people. Uh, there's no need to to stamp out in my comments in big capital letters spaced apart promosm like you're you're claiming you know uh, some kind of victory um get over yourself people i mean you just seem like a, an entitled karen like how dare you put this on how dare you promote yourself people promote themselves every freaking day every time you go to work you're promoting yourself by working your ass off right i mean get, get over it promosm yeah, I got your promosm friggin' hanging, people. Um, take a long walk up a short pier, as they used to say in my day. I'm not promoting anything. I'm not abdicating any way of life. Um, you know... Do what you're going to do. Live your life the way you're going to live your life. Just afford me the same respect and let me live my life the way I'm going to live my life. You know, if I'm bugging you, change the channel. You know, that's all there is to that. You know, I mean, what do you do on your channel? Do you post videos or do, are you just on YouTube? to run around and make um, ill comments about other people's work. <coughs> you know, this is, this is my 20th episode 
of me getting on here and sharing my life experiences, you know, and I'm going to continue to do that as long as it, as long as it feels right, you know, and then I'll move on to something else or maybe I'll add on something else. Um, but, um, yeah, I see a lot of videos out there and a lot of channels where people are really trying to ram their way of life down your throat. Um, people who are really, really desperately trying to sell you something, you know, um, if I have swag, if I have, um, merchandise well it's not going to be for sale okay it'll be to give away to people who enjoy hanging out and doing you know the same thing i like to do um and and that's that you know um if i want to give stuff away i got a ton of old crap that i can you know give away and i can give shit away to whoever i want to whoever decides to send me a comment and have some back and forth. I mean, there's already um, one or two people in my book here that have earned um, some kind of uh, reciprocation just for hanging out, you know. Um, and, you know, the, the more back and forth I get, the more fun it is for me, you know. And what's really neat is is having the opportunity to talk to people from who knows where. I mean, the last the last couple of comments I've gotten, uh, besides Mr. Friggin' Promosm, um, were um, from uh, two separate gentlemen uh, in uh, far off Canada, which was uh, really really awesome because I I don't know on about. I don't know anyone from Canada. When I was younger, I knew a, a couple of kids who had moved down from Canada so their father fathers could work. But other than that, you know, I've never had the opportunity to meet anyone from the North. Um, I know and I've known a lot of people from south of the border, but never north of the border. So it's, it's really neat. Um, I've had a few um, oh, way long time ago. Uh, I had a few uh, chats, video game chats, with uh, people in Australia and New Zealand. For some reason, um, the time zone thing kind of set our comments up. So I was, I was probably out. I was probably up staying up late or something. But uh, for me, you know. Um, it's the, the back and forth with people, you know, well, with, with a person, with persons, um, you get, you get that crowd mob mentality and you get people leaving comments like pro Muslim guy. Uh, but when you get the individual who just wants to do that one-on-one -on -one thing, then you get real people, you get real communication, real conversation, uh, and, it, you know, there's nothing like that. There's, it's a, a huge difference between um, having to talk to someone every day at work because you work with them, not because you like them, not because you share the same interests, not because you would go out of your way to even look at these people outside of work. You know, um, that's, that's different. Uh, when someone goes out of their way to make a connection with you because they find something going on in your world uh, worthy of sharing into their world and vice versa. Uh, now that right there is, uh, that's a human thing. And that's, I really dig that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, um, I don't, I don't see myself as trying to sell any any ideas or ideals you know um if, if i am it's the idea that the the past was okay and you don't have to shun it you don't have to 
look at history and go, ooh, history bad. Let's just erase it. You know, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to look at others and think, well, that person isn't like me, so fuck them, right? Um, it, you know, my thing is everybody's different, you know? And we have way more similarities than differences, right? So, you know, I think being very very different is what makes us the same is what makes us um the same yet unique at the same time you know um i really dig people who are able to scratch it like a bear who are able to um be themselves regardless of what bullshit is thrust upon them or at them um by you know freaking pro Muslim morons um who <laughs> the, the the funnest part about these idiot comments and these uh these people who leave these comments is is they show no time um viewing they show like seconds of viewing my channel which means they get on there they watch it for a few seconds they see something or hear something that sets that little light off in there that says all oh, promosm. So all of a sudden they've got to type in their stupid comment and shuffle off down the road to um, annoy somebody else, you know? Um, and that's hilarious. That's just freaking hilarious that, that people are proud of themselves for doing that kind of shit. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, if if I'm promoting myself, then, then I'm no different than any other freaking person in um, uh, in Western society. I mean, come on, really? You know, what do you do when you go fill out a work application or hand in a resume somewhere? You're promoting yourself, you know. You're, you're, you're any of those moron pro Muslim leaving comment motherfuckers um, can just bite me immensely upon the tukus. Um Because it's just negative. And I'll, I'll, I'll delete the comment as quick as they come in because, you know, there's, there, there's no need for that. So if you're coming by later and you're just reading through the description of today's show, and you see that I typed in what the hell is a freaking promosm, right? Um, there's no real need to answer in the comments, even though you probably won't watch the show to hear me say there's no reason to leave it in the comments. You're probably just going to read what you want, hear what you want, see what you want, and then um, make some kind of promosm comment and then move on. Um, and all I can say to that is, wow, really, people? You know, you have you have nothing better to do. Obviously, I have nothing better to do than to sit here and share my life um, and my experiences and my stories and my little world here um, and, and kind of share it with you all. Um, but that's that's the whole reason I'm here um, is to kind of share my life and my world with you. And if you don't want to you don't want to hang out, that's fine. I mean, I can I can literally sit here and talk to myself for hours, um, right? Because I'm going to do it anyway, um, whether I'm sitting here by myself or I'm sitting here with my dogs or sitting here with my wife or daughter. Um, I'm just going to blah, 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 all right? Because when you get to that point in life, where um, you're looking at life in the rear view mirror, you kind of want to make sure that you say what you got to say, you do what you got to do. Um, you, you teach those life lessons to your family. You, um, you tell those stories that you want to go on. Uh, everybody, you know, at some point in your life, everybody gets 
to where they got to let it all out. All right. Now, some people, they sit and, you know, one day I'm going to write that American novel, that perfect American novel. And, and a lot of people do. They sit and they get to that stage in their life where they have the time and the place and the energy uh, and the means to, to just sit and write. And they do. They write out that, that life story. Um, the last, oh, 20 or 30 years of my father's life, he just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote um, and just wrote about all kinds of stuff. I don't believe that he wrote much about himself. He wrote a lot of uh, fiction, a lot of science fiction, a lot of historical fiction type of stuff. Um, and I'm sure a lot of those stories that I'll never get to read, uh, a lot of those stories um, say a lot about him, but he, I don't think he ever wrote about himself. I, I've done a lot of writing um, in the last, you know, 10 or 20 years. And I usually write about what I know and what I know is me and my life and my life experience. So um, if, if I ever get to publish anything, uh, it'll be more than likely poetry, song lyrics, or... Um, autobiographical life stuff um, stories about my life told anew as um, you know some kind of thriller suspense story um, because that was kind of you know everything was pretty suspenseful back then you know you never knew what was going to be going on what was happening um, and we were you know it was the kind of world we lived in you know live or die you know, damn it, let's live. If we're going to live, let's, let's freaking party it up. And, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, if you got something against people promoting themselves, um, move on, move on down the road. Um, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, like I said, I, I ain't trying to sell anything. Uh, if I am, I'm trying to sell the idea that the past was okay and it's okay to bring the past into the present and the present back into the past because I do it all day long. You know, uh, I just kind of sit in my little world, live it in yesterday. Um, you know, I'm sorry that it's titled one of the songs that I wrote, Living in Yesterday. Um, but it, um, yeah, it's okay to to bounce around in time because I'm a I'm a time traveler by nature. I mean, I'm, every every morning I come in here in my time my new time suit, uh, ready to to bounce back to the past, um, and I yeah. I enjoy it. What can I say, you know, um, my wife thinks I'm crazy. My daughter thinks I'm, uh, you know, a normal kook, a normal nutcase. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, the few friends that I have definitely think I'm a nutcase. Um, but what are, you know, what are you going to do? You have to, you know, I, I like everybody and appreciate everybody in my life for who they are. And I wouldn't want to change them, you know. Um, I just would expect that I'm, you know, allowed the same courtesy. You know, let me be me for the sake of being me, you know. Um, a lot of people spend their whole lives looking for themselves, much like I've done. Um, and you keep chasing this image that everyone has of you uh, because that's what you think that, that you're supposed to be. And I gave up on that, um, you know, a decade ago. And it took me, you know, most of this last decade to figure out that, you know what, I, I just have to go 
be that kid that I was, that teenager that I was, that rebel, that, you know, guy who could just fuck you to the authorities and just continue to do whatever the hell I want. And that's where I'm at now, you know. Um, and, you know, and at this point, it's not so much a fuck you to the authorities as it is a, a fuck you to, you know, status quo and and you know this is the way you're supposed to be because this is the way you're supposed to be you know and and people coming down on you because you're some kind of you know weirdo you know i've been a weirdo my whole life you know and it was only back in in high school and junior high and stuff that i felt like you know fuck it was okay to be a weirdo and so that's my mentality now you know, everything I do now in my life is as if I skipped over the last 30 years, you know, and I'm still that high school kid again, you know, um, when I was a, a high school kid, um, I used to get up early in the morning and, um, go down and get a joint from a friend um, and then meet up with some other friends and get loaded before we go to school. Or I'd swipe some of my parents' stash and roll up some joints and take them to school so I could uh, trade one for lunch money, you know, and then have another one to smoke after school with whoever, you know, I was hanging out with. Um, Weed has always been a commodity in my life, not, you know, so much as a party favor, um, especially in the early days. Uh, it was a way to get by. It was a way to make friends. It was a way to to uh, get some money so that I could eat. I mean, more often than not, I would be selling off little bits of my weed so that I could make some money to get a Circle K burrito and a milk, you know, and an apple pie, you know. Um, so yeah, um, I think this morning show is going to go on as long as I have something to talk about in the mornings. Uh, and it's only four days a week. And I think that gives me enough time in between weekly shows that uh, that I can come up with something to talk about, clear my head, you know, and work on other projects. Not that I've worked on anything lately other than this uh, and playing a little guitar. Um, but, uh, you know... I'm going to do this other bong hit again. So join me if you want, uh, whether you're here live or, or not. <clears throat> so I think I mentioned before that I've been getting up at 4.20 four days a week to do the show and uh, it's kind of been rough bouncing back and forth from the normal schedule to that schedule so I've decided to set my alarm to wake me up every day at 420 uh, so that if I'm not doing what I'm doing now then I've got three mornings a week to kind of be geared up to do something else. Uh, and by that, I mean probably work on um, work on some bare bones for uh, a, a live evening show or work on um, video segments for a, uh, a recorded Sunday show. Ah, 
but I think that my schedule um, the same every day is going to help me secure um, better secure that routine uh, and keep going forward with my other video projects. Um, oh, thank you, Robert, um, for that um, great video chat that we had last night. Uh, that's fun. Having a video chat with my brother is always uh, a blast. Uh, he's a funny guy. Um, and uh, we have uh, a lot of history from the 70s and 80s um, between us. So there's, there's always something uh, to talk about. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'll have to record one of our video chats uh, and share it with y'all um, because it's just, yeah, it's fun. It's fun, weird, wacky, wild stuff. Uh, of course, um, you know, I'm always trying to get someone to listen to me talk about my YouTube channel or, or listen to uh, me play some music or something. Um, so I probably get a little tedious on the video chats. So I try to, you know, I'm, I'm more often setting the guitar back down than actually playing it because I just assume that, uh, you know, I'm going to be annoying to people. Uh, as, as I have felt most of my life, you know, uh, I wind up quite often just shutting up myself before somebody tells me to shut up because I just get tired of hearing my own voice or tired of looking into somebody's eyes and seeing their eyes glaze over. It's like, oh God, won't this guy shut up? Uh, and it may, it's probably not that way at all, but that's the way I feel, so I just go with it. You know, this chair is squeaky. I'm going to have to lube it up with some, uh, some white lithium, to spray some white lithium in the bearings there, because this is... That is really getting squeaky. Um, squeaky. And I don't like squeaky. Yeah. Yeah. So our show is going to run uh, a little less than two hours today. Um, I didn't get logged in uh, on my live show today at exactly five. For some reason, something happened and it wouldn't let me go live. And I had to end and reboot and re go live and it was kind of a bummer um, so that show never made it on but this one did uh, and this is episode 20 and we did listen to radio shows today and I did post those radio shows in the link so be sure to check them out and if you can uh, like subscribe share um, post a comment uh, if, if you see a, a another YouTuber's video in the comments. Please, if you get to view their video, please like and comment and share and most especially subscribe to their channel as well. Subscriptions really help YouTube um, figure out what they're going to allow us to do next. And the more subscribers I have, the more I'm able to do through YouTube, um, like I can't go live on my phone uh, until I get to 50 subscribers, right? Who knew? Um, so um, right now I'm, I'm hoping to get 50 subscribers so that I can do some around the town stuff. And when I'm at a concert, I can go live. Uh, that'll be fun because we seem to be doing concerts every month or two. Um, so um so yeah so there's that so please like subscribe comment do all of that all of that jazz uh i try not to pander like everyone else so i don't want to keep flashing up on the screen subscribe 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 like give us a thumbs up all that shit. you know you're either going to do it or you're not uh, you either get it or you don't hopefully you get it and um, and then I'll get it and I'll get more subscribers and, and more likes. Um, even if you only pop onto a video for a few seconds or a few minutes, it helps. It really helps my statistics 
uh, and my analytics, if you watch more than uh, a few seconds or a few minutes. Um, but, you know, I get it time-wise in the morning. Nobody wants to do this. The only reason I'm doing this in the morning from 5 to 7 is because um, my house is quiet. My neighborhood is quiet. Everyone's asleep. Um, and I feel most energetic and most creative in the mornings. So that's why I'm here. Um, knowing myself that it goes to a playlist on YouTube uh, allows me the freedom to do it now, knowing that it will hopefully get viewed later. And a lot of these live shows have gotten views after the fact. And I really appreciate that to everyone who's viewed. Uh, if you guys leave comments, then I can put you on my list. And then um, you go into a hat during um, the telethon. And I draw your name out of a hat. And uh, I get in touch with you. And I send you something. Um, and, you know, I know people are going to go, oh, promosm, promosm, promosm. But anything that I send you is going to be something for you, not something for me that I want you to, to have, you know, put this shirt on because, you know, it'll show that you like my show, you know, um, and we may get there at some point, but, um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, going to be a, done because it's fun, not because I'm really out to promote myself, um, because once I get to a certain um status on youtube with my subscriber count it's either going to take off or it isn't and you know i, I want to have the you the youtube subscriber count so that i'm able to do more but i don't want i don't need to have the recognition by having thousands upon thousands of of subscribers unless they want to subscribe that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to do my thing and to post my videos and to do my live stuff and to tell my stories and to hopefully get people engaged to tell me their stories uh, and find people who maybe were in the same area at the same time. Um, so that's, you know, that's why I'm here. You know, you either like it or you don't. If you don't, you know, there's, there's a billion things on YouTube for you to get into. You know, so go, you know, put on your thinking cap and your searching goggles and, you know, head out there and, and start searching for stuff because there's a million things. I've been on YouTube for, you know, over a, over a decade now. Um, and um, I've watched a lot of videos, gone through a lot of uh, subscriptions. I mean, my subscription list was so long at one point. Uh, it took me like a minute to get through and to read, actually read every um, subscription. And um, uh, my YouTube page was constantly bombarded with just video after video after video, just, just tons of stuff. And it, it became so overwhelming that I went and I deleted my entire subscription list. I unsubscribed everybody. And now I've got a dozen or so uh, subscriptions. And most of these have started recently because I feel like if I'm going to get someone who subscribes to me, I'm going to immediately try to find out who and go to their channel and subscribe to them and give them a thumbs up and watch some of their videos and share some of them stuff and kind of, you know, pay them back for the courtesy of liking my stuff or subscribing to my channel. Uh, and I think it's just courtesy, right? So, uh, yeah, if, if you, uh, if you're buzzing around YouTube, um, subscribe to those things that you feel good about the things that you enjoy. You know, like the history guy. I really enjoy the history guy and watching uh, 
all of these, you know, this history that I never knew about. I mean, it's just fascinating stuff. Uh, I really enjoy the, the Y files uh, on YouTube and Hecklefish and those stories. Um, just awesome stuff. Um, and while my channel isn't anywhere near as sophisticated as these shows, um, I like to think that I bring a taste of one man's life to YouTube, you know, and that's basically what it is. You're going to hear about me, my life stories, the past, how I grew up, how I was raised. Um, you'll hear uh, off and on about my wife and daughter uh, and, and, and the now in my life. But most likely you'll hear about um, things that, that I went through um, as a child and as a teenager. Because this isn't that where we all, you know, spend our, um, our learning years is in our, you know, is in our early, you know, teens and preteens. At least that's the way it was. For, I don't know. You know, some people are, you know, raised under a rock and then, you know, at 21, they're kicked out and, and now they got to go out and fend for themselves. And they don't know what the hell's going on because, you know, mommy and daddy did everything for them. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess that's a, just the way it is sometimes, you know, um, for me, I had so many life experiences that, uh, I mean, I have, I've probably forgotten more bizarre life experiences than most people will ever have. You know, I mean, most people out there probably go, you know, remember that one time and then that was it, you know, that one time was it, you know, for them. And that's their story. You know, and oh, uncle's telling that story again, you know, him and that mule and being naked in a field, you know, uh, you know, if all you got is one story, jump on here and tell me that story. Cause I'd love to hear about you, you being naked in a field with a mule. All right. Uncle Henry. So I got a lot of friends who who know that I have this channel and know that I post videos on occasion. I haven't been tagging, but, um, one or two people in only a couple of videos because those particular videos, um, at the time I wanted them to try to watch, but, uh, you know, I haven't been tagging, um, friends uh, and family members to be watching these videos. Because, well, first of all, I don't want to get them burned out because, I mean, who wants to sit and listen to some old guy ramble about nothing, you know? And uh, second, I, I want them, when I have something that I want them to watch, I want them to be interested in it and hopefully participate. Uh, like when I do um, some kind of a drawing, uh, I would really like to get a lot of names because I have names of only a few subscribers, less than 10 subscribers I have names for because people remain incognito on YouTube so that, um, I'm gonna have to get some visine, so that people don't know who they are and they can, you know, leave comments or whatever. And, uh, you know, that's cool. But uh, how am I gonna subscribe if, if I don't know who you are? Uh, how am I going to watch your stuff if I don't know who you are? How am I going to enter you in the raffle if I don't know who you are, right? So um, I can add people who I can see on my subscriber list. And then what I'll do is just from my Facebook account, I'll just grab a bunch of, uh, you know, my friends and family and put them in the hat because at some point when I do a live raffle uh, or drawing, uh, 
I'm going to be um, wanting all of all of you to come join me. So I'll probably tag all of you and then put your names in the hat. Right. And so then that way, if you show up, you know that uh, at some point you're going to be involved. Um, and uh, and hopefully I'll get you to have some kind of back and forth. Um, so, yeah, uh, that live show. Not sure when. Logistically, I need to have um, a somewhat quiet house. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a lot of silent set here uh, while we go about our lives. Uh, and then I'll have to check in, you know, on the uh, telethon here when I can. Uh, I'll have to link my stereo directly into my mixer so that I can turn off the mic and put on a radio show and um, be able to get up and go do things um, and, and leave something for you to listen to. Uh, so, yeah, and on the, uh, on the advice of my daughter, um, I've decided not to up the ante to another uh, show until I get to 100 subscribers. Uh, and then when I get to 100 subscribers, then I'm going to be adding on another show, a live Friday night show or a Sunday morning recorded show. Um, so on that note, uh, I am going to say adios weirdos. And I am just going to leave everything on here because that's the way we started the show today. So that's the way we're going to end the show. <clears throat> I'm going to leave you with a bong hit. And I will see you for this week's last show tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. Hopefully they'll let me get on there at 5 o'clock. And remember, tomorrow we'll be talking about your favorite shark movies. All right? From Jaws to The Meg 2. All right? So, adios, weirdos. Y'all take care. And I will see you on the flip-flop. That means I'll see you in the past, people. Adios. <laughs>